not driving towards a goal, when he's not driving towards a vision, he's going to end up in a place where he has not planned to be. When someone gets to a place where he has not planned to be, he, he might become a victim of something he has not planned or something he was not expecting. So to avoid becoming a victim in life, it is important to live with purpose. It is important to live with intention. And the more intentional we are about life, the more profitable our lives can become. The more intentional we, have, we are about life, the more we can harness our energies, our gifts, our potentials, and our talents towards profitable channels that will bless our lives in the long run. Every human is gifted. We are all gifted with one potential or another. In fact, we are gifted with one, more than one potential. Um, God is omnipotent, is an omnipotent being, and we humans are plenipotent beings. Permit me to use that English. Plenipotent means we are blessed with many potentials, and we are plenipotentiary beings because we have many gifts, we have many talents, many potentials. And each of these gifts, each of these talents are endowments that are supposed to help us make profits in our lifetime. We all know that life is conditioned by time. And everything that is to be done in, in life is regulated by time. And by the time you, according to a scripture that says that there is time for everything, a time to be born and a time to die. And they say that life is a journey between B and D, birth and death. And within B and D, we do all know that we have C. And C is what they call choice. So we are human beings with the gift to make decisions, with the gift to make choices in life. And the choices we make can either make us or mar us. So it is important for us to be able to choose rightly at different times of our lives for us to actually get to the state where we are going to. So our gifts are natural endowments that are meant to make profit for us in life. And they are life resources that need to be refined and developed to become useful tools that can guarantee our survival and sustainability on the earth. God did not just create us to live this life like that, to live every day hoping for survival. No. God has a purpose for each of us. He has a mandate for each of us. And the line, um, the path to fulfilling that purpose is traceable to identifying the gifts that we have, the potentials that we have, and using them profitably. So, in our race to living purposefully, we are going to come across several kinds of experiences, several kinds of experiences that are tempting, that are trying to make us to focus on one thing or the other. And each experience we have will actually be using a portion of our talents, a portion of our potentials. Each experience we have in life will be eating on any potential we have. So if we don't have the right potentials to invest into each experience, we do not have the opportunity to make profit in that line. So for us to be um, sustained on the health, we need to actually recognize the gifts we have and be able to refine them and develop them for profitability. And the more refined our gifts are, the more profitable they become. The more refined your gifts are, the more profitable they become. For instance, if you refine your gifts to a level of 90% and there's someone else who refines his own gift to the level of 50%, if there's someone who needs the service of someone who uses your kind of gift, they are going to come for the person who has a more developed gift because they know that he has what it takes to deliver effectively. So effectiveness is tied to refinement. And the more refined you are, the more effective you can be in life. So the journey to becoming great in life is actually based on how refined our gifts, our talents, and our potentials are. So the more refined we are, the more profitable we become. But before our gifts can be useful for maximum profitability, there is a very long process that must take place. Before we can have our gifts become very productive for us, there are several stages that these gifts must go through. And 
there are five stages I have um, outlined here. And the first one is that we must discover these gifts. Before we can become profitable in life, we must first discover these gifts. And self-discovery is the foundation of every greatness in life. It's the foundation of every success in life. If you do not discover yourself, there is no way you can become successful. Yes, people quantify success in matters of wealth, in matters of fame, and all the other today. But success is not actually based on how much money you have, or how much people know you, or how popular you are, although those are also metrics that the society defines success with. But success is finding true happiness and fulfillment in the things you have done with your life. You will come to a stage in your life when you will look back at the things you have done and you will either be sorrowful about them or be happy about them. So when you get to that state where you feel fulfilled and satisfied that you have done the right thing in life, that's what success is. It may not be in matter of having so much money or in matter of having so much fame or popularity, but then when you have such a kind of fulfillment in your own heart, of what you have achieved, then you have already succeeded. So self-discovery is the foundation of every greatness in life. And the second thing you must do with your gift is that you must discover the purpose for your gift. You must discover the purpose for your gift. If you do not discover the purpose for your gift, there is one and hundred percent assurance that you are going to misuse that gift. And that's what is called abuse. Yes, many people have gifts today that they are abusing. They have potentials that they are abusing. When a man does not know the purpose of his giftings or his potentials, he is liable to abuse them. They say when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So when a man does not understand the purpose of his giftings, he abuses them. For instance, I'm speaking very well now. If I don't understand the purpose of my gift, I can use it on the street gossiping about others, spreading fake news about others. That is a kind of use. And every man is always going to use their gift, either they like it or not. You are going to be using your gift. But the, the definition of, um, of profitability comes into play when you use your gift in the right order. And the third thing you must do with your potentials or your gifts is that you must discover its nature. Yes, you must discover its nature. You cannot discover purpose until you discover the nature of that element. The purpose of an element is based in the nature of that element. So when you discover the nature of your gifts, the nature of your potentials, it helps you to define the purpose for your giftings, for your potentials. And the fourth one is that you must discover their specific usefulness. You must discover their specific usefulness. Your potentials are useful for a particular purpose. Your potentials are useful for a particular reason, a particular um, a kind of mission, a kind of assignment that those potentials are meant to achieve. So discovering the usefulness of your potentials will actually help you to maximize them. And then the fifth one is that you must discover the path of their deployment towards ensuring profit. Yes. Many people are using their gifts, but they are not using them profitably. Many people are using their potentials, but they are not using them profitably. They are not getting something in return for the usage of their potentials. And God did not design human beings to use their gifts without profits. A scripture even says that the profit of the head is for man. So for you to profit with your gift or with the usage of your gift, you must discover their deployment path. Deployment path means the, the area of their effectiveness, the, the, the functionality, the area of their functionality and effectiveness. So when you have done all of this, it sets you on the path of greatness in life. However, these five factors are all based on purpose. The, the foundation of the profitability of your gifts is based on the purpose. And purpose is of the greatest importance amongst the things you must do with your gift before they lead to profit to a profitable end. 
Like I said earlier, life is sacred and meaningful, but it is only meaningful when you have been able to discover its purpose. And the reason we are here today is to understand why and how we should discover our purpose. Why should we discover our purpose? And how can we discover our purpose? So life is not meaningful until you have actually known why you are existing, until you have actually known why you are living. And the process to get in why you are living is actually very complex for most of us as humans because we do not have a background um, knowledge of who we are. Many of us think about ourselves, we think of who we are based on the judgment of others. We think of who we are based on the experiences we've had. We think of who we are based on our background, based on our nationality, based on our race, based on our religion. We define who we are in these contexts because that is the range of our knowledge. But who we are is far more important, is far more um, detailed than where we have come from. It's far more detailed than our experiences. It's far more detailed than our background. It's far more detailed than our religion. It's far more detailed than our race. So discovering who we are is actually one of those um, important stages of life that every great man has to go through. And if you see anyone becoming great today, it is because they are able to know who they are and the purpose for which they want to live. You know, I said the other time that life is a race between B and D. And C is between D, B and D, which is choice. So when you have discovered who you are and what you are supposed to do, it helps you in making the right decisions in life and making the right choices. So your identity is most important for defining your purpose. And your identity is more than your physical image or your look. Your identity is more than that. What you look like is not as important as the definition of your destiny. The physique, the beauty, the elegance of your physical nature is not enough to define your purpose. It's not enough to tell who you are. Your self-identity or your self-image is more than that. And your identity also defines your source. Your identity tells where you have come from. For instance, if you see a dog, you know that it is a dog. If you see a lamb, you know that it is, a, it is the offspring of a goat. And when you see a man, you are able to define that person based on how he looks. So the identity of an element of life tells of their source. And as human beings, our identity tells, of, tells us of only one source, which is God. So your identity also defines your purpose. When you define who you are, it helps you to define your purpose. For instance, when God was creating man in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, he said, in verse 26, he said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness, and let them do this and that. So God was actually revealing to man his identity and his purpose together. God was telling him, okay, this is who you are. You were created after my image, and you were created after my likeness, and this is what you are supposed to do. You are supposed to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. So your identity also carries the revelation of your purpose. So if the definition of your identity is wrong, then the definition of your purpose will be wrong. If the definition of who you are is wrong, then definition of what you can do and what you are supposed to do will be wrong. Another thing is your identity also defines your potentials. Just like I said, once you see a dog, you know that it is a dog. You know that it can bark. Once you see a goat, you know it can bleat. Once you see a man, you know that man can speak. You know that man can write. So it defines your potentials. It defines your giftings. And the last thing is your identity also defines your vision. Who you think you are will always define where you think you can go to and where you think you can reach in life. If you do not think that you are capable of doing something, then you will not be able to do it. So your identity defines your thought life. It defines how you think. 
It defines how you explore the world around you because it tells you of your potentials and what you are able to do. Like I said, your identity is more than who you are physically. It is more of what you think. Your identity is more of what you think. What you think of is actually who you are. Even the Bible says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if your thoughts about yourself is actually wrong, then your definition of who you are will be wrong. And it is right, it is important for you to correct your thoughts. To actually correct your thoughts. Because most of us, most times, are thinking wrongly about ourselves. Most times when you have something to do, you are thinking that, oh, I have tried this before and I've failed. Oh, there are people in my family who have done this before and never succeeded. Oh, people in my country are not even known for this kind of thing. So your thinking can limit your destiny. Your thinking can limit your ability to succeed. Your thinking can limit your potentials. And if you don't correct your thinking, then your identity will not help you to achieve your purpose in life. So there are seven assignments you should do with your gifts or your potentials. Seven assignments you should do with your potentials. Number one, you must discover them. Number two, you must explore them. I've talked so much on discovery. Then you must explore. Number two, in exploration, you discover the areas of your usefulness. In your exploration of your gifts, you discover the areas of the usefulness of your gifts. According to my thinking, I believe that there is no gift that is actually useful for just one purpose. There is no gift, human gift this time, that is useful for only one purpose. Your gifts will be useful for several purposes. And in the exploration of your gifts, you are able to get the purposes for which your gifts are useful. And the third thing is, you must develop your gifts. Seven things you must do with your gifts. Number three, you must develop your gifts. Number one, you must discover them. Number two, you must explore them. Number three, you must develop them. Development is when you take your gift to the factory, just like this microphone was made from a factory. So your gift also needs to be taken into a factory where it will be sculpt, sculpted and, and, and cultured for great performance. If your gift is not developed, then it cannot enhance your profitability. It cannot help you make greater exploits in life. And the fourth thing is you must deploy your gift. You must deploy your gift. Many people, they have discovered their gift. They are exploring it. You know, exploration never ends. Anyway, the exploration of your gifts and potentials never end. But then they have disco discovered their gift. They are exploring it. And they are also um, developing it. But they are not deploying it. You know, deployment means you are letting out your gift to make profit. That's what deployment means. Letting out your gift to make profit. So deployment is actually where profitability comes into place. For instance, this is me this deploying my gift. I'm servicing my gift to others. So in that, you can make profit by servicing your gift. And the fifth one is that you have to manage your gift. Every gift should be managed. You don't have a gift and then not manage it. You know, there are times when you get to a time and it looks like your gifts cannot um, continue to be profitable. At that point, you need to manage your gift. You need to look at how profitable your gift has been, how it has been able to help you to make profit, and then refine your gift to make better profit. So that's what management is. And the sixth one is to transact your gift. Transact your gift. And transaction is actually similar to deployment. And transaction means to make profit from uh, a trade. So if you don't transact your gift, there's no way you're going to make profit from it. This is me deploying my gift, but I'm not transacting this gift now. For instance, if someone hires me to speak at their conference, I'm liable to charge them. Is that not good? <laughs> so transacting your gift means making room for your gift to make profit for you. That is placing a charge on the use of your potentials. God did not give you your gifts, just um, service them to the world for free alone. Of course, you have to make free services for people. But then, you have to transact your gifts to get into higher realms of profitability. 
And the last one there is that you must transfer your gifts. Transfer your gifts. And the transference of gifts means to give your gifts to others, to raise others to also imbibe your gifts. And when you are transacting your gifts, you must not transact your gifts alone. You must also, oh, sorry, transfer. When you are transferring your gifts, you don't transfer it alone. You transfer with your gift your vision. You transfer with your gift your purpose. You transfer with your gift your values. You transfer with your gift your vision. You transfer with your gift your purpose. You transfer with your gift your values. I said one thing at the time. I said the vision of a man is not supposed to die with him. The purpose of a man is not supposed to die with him. It takes the transference of gifts to actually make your purpose outlive you, to make your vision outlive you. And that's where the transfer of your gifts comes in. I'll be stopping there for today because of our time. And, and I believe that this session has actually been um, impactful to you. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much. It's one more round of applause for him. You all, I must believe that, uh, I really believe that every one of us has been blessed in one way or the other. It's actually a wonderful time with some mafilia. Thank you very much for um, deploying your gift for others to actually enjoy what you have. And uh, we also believe that it will get a time that you begin to transact and um, you actually get more from that in Jesus' name. Um, I want us to, if you have any question, please, you can just keep it with you. When it is time for that, you will call on you. And uh, without wasting time, we want to move to the next section. And that's when I will be calling on our pastor and a leader, person of Pastor Kumui Olubomi. You're welcome, sir. Praise God. I hope you've been blessed on the first presentation. Please, I want, I want to encourage you. One of the qualities of a leader is to put down information. When you put it down, then go home and ruminate on it. That will help you. Now we are on the session I'll be dealing with discovering and de developing your leadership potentials. Discovery and developing your leadership potentials. Everybody is born to rule. Everybody is born to lead. And everybody has this capacity. But not everybody is leading. But not everybody knows the worth of his or her life because of ignorance. And if we are going to succeed, we are going to go far to explore what God has given to us. There is need for us to break the yoke of ignorance. When you don't understand a thing, it is most likely you die in that condition. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, when God was creating man, he said, he blessed man and he said that man should be fruitful, multiplying and replenish the heart and subdue it. The word subdue, dominion, is points to the fact that when, man, when God created man, God assumed that Man has become a leader. Man did not put, God did not put man in the garden of Eden just for nothing's sake. Man was put in the garden of Eden to lead. And when you read that very verse, it says, over every living thing, God knows, or let me say God knew, that very soon man will be replenishing the hearts. There is need for man to take over, to take charge. So God said, let man subdue the earth. 
This is talking about the capacity that God has embedded in every man. But man lost this power as a result of carelessness, sin. And up to today, many of us still wallow in the pool of that failure that our fathers have made. Because when man failed, dominion left. When man failed, the authority left. A man who ought to be leading became a slave as a result of little disobedience that the creator gave, but man was not able to keep. So when we talk about leadership, there is need for, you can't be a leader if you do not detect the potentials God has embedded in you. Many people feel today it is when you are leading, you stand up, you have people behind, it is then you are a leader. No, everybody is a leader. Why? There is a unit of gifts that God has put in you. Your own varies from mine. Mine varies from your own. So leadership is done the ability to control others through manipulative, their emotion, and playing on their fears and need. However, leadership is a product of inspiration and influence. Leadership is a product of inspiration and influence. And for you to be, for you to be relevant, you need to have influence. There is difference between being a dictator and you being having influence over your environment. Because your environment and your potential gives expression by adding value to lives of other people around. If you are not adding value to people, to the life of the people around, then your potential is not yet utilized. Your potential and your influence gives expression by you having good relationship with others and passion and caring for your people. So leadership is a driven is a is leadership is driven by passion to achieve a noble cause. You don't add passion for anything for being a leader. You will discover you will not live where you are. Leadership is a life one place, not a life one leads. Leadership is a life one place that is a responsibility that is leadership by responsibility not leadership by title many people believe it is when they have big title md senior managing director this and that without actually being responsible to the course of that field such a person is not living is just managing. There is different from being a manager and a leader. A leader goes ahead of manager. A manager plans, a manager organizes, a manager executes. But when you talk about a leader, a leader is responsible more than anything we can talk about a manager. So each of us was created to rule that is the plan of God. We are created to govern. We are created to control. We are created to master. We are created to lead our environments. You must understand that God did not just put man in the garden for nothing's sake. He put him in the garden for a purpose. To dress and to keep the garden. The moment the man failed from this responsibility, then they was linked in. So we are to rule our society. We are to rule our environment. And the only way through which we rule our environment is by, by discovering our potentials. Most people fail to lead today because in their heart, they don't believe and identify whom they are. This is the problem. Meanwhile, 
The Holy Scripture says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, that God has made us kings and priests. As a king, a king resides in the palace. Is that not so? And when you reside in the palace, you identify a king with authority. And as a priest, a priest is working in the shop. And as a priest, he delivers the heart and the mind of God to the people. So, God is saying that when God created us, he has designed the purpose for our life. The purpose of being a king is different from being a priest. It is not left to you to know where you are standing. But there is a problem. We are still on the introductory part. I really want us to really understand the problem of man. The reason why many of us do not able to discover whom we are is a problem of identity. We don't, we don't even know whom we are. And the Holy Scripture did not hide from us our identity. He says, you are a king. You are a priest. Is that not so? At a place, he said, you are a chosen generation. A royal priest. A peculiar people. Can you see? A holy nation. The scripture has systematically analyzed our identity. But man has the problem of identity. And for you to know your identity, there are questions you need to ask yourself. Knowing your identity is a pathway to discover your potential. Number one question you must ask yourself who am I? Who am I? This is talking about your originality. Before, because if you don't understand your identity, you will not be able to discover whom you are. So, for you to analyze your identity, to really understand whom you, your identity, there are questions you need to ask yourself. Do I just come into this world to be an onlooker? Who am I? Your originality. Who am I? Is, that is talking about your peculiarity. What you have that others do not have. What I can do that others cannot do. This is a pathway to discover your potential. You are not going to stop there. You ask another question. What am I sent to do? Why did God bring me into the world? In the book of Holy Bible, in Jeremiah, when God was calling him, said he was going to be a prophet of God. He said, God, but I am a child. He never knew the reason why he was sent. Then God told him, before you were born, I've ordained you and I've sanctified you to be a prophet of God. So for you to understand your identity, you need to ask yourself, what am I sent to do? This is talking about the value, your purpose on earth. What is my purpose on earth? The purpose of Jeremiah is different from the purpose. The purpose of Jeremiah on earth is different from the purpose of, of, of Isaiah on earth. And both of them were, pre, were prophets. The purpose of Isaiah was different from the purpose of Daniel. And both of them were prophets. So you must understand, you should not be a photocopy. You should not be a copycat. You should sit down to analyze what is my business on heart? And another thing you need to ask yourself, why am I born? Why did, why did God allow me to come? Your life found expression of purpose when you understand that you are born to be distinct. Your life will find expression of purpose when you have the understanding that you are born with passion. You are born with a vision. You are born to lead. You are born to be great. You are born 
to have authority. And I want to tell you that your mentality is a function of your potential ability. Your mental attitude is a function of your potential ability. Because if your mental ability cannot capture what God is having for you, you may discover that you die like a man who doesn't make an impact because your mental ability was weak. No wonder the Holy Scripture says that you need to renew your mind. Renew your mind because it is a general belief that what you see, you believe. Sin is belief. But it is more than that. You must understand that you are born with dignity. These are the hegel you must have. You are born with self-respect. You are born with honor. You must understand that you are born with opportunities. When you were born, there were several opportunities inside of you. And when you cannot see the opportunity, opportunity within, you can never see opportunity outside. Opportunity within attracts the opportunity without. You are born with possibility. You are born with destiny because your destiny is your decision. That is why you must not joke with potential. Another question you ask yourself about your identity is how can I fulfill my purpose? This is talking about planning and implementation. And at this junction, I want us to know that God's factor is, the, is very, very important. When God's factor is ruled out, purpose discovery or purpose fulfillment can be difficult. It is possible for you to discover whom you are, but to fulfill it in the absence of God's factor might be difficult. Another question you need to ask yourself, where do I stand to gain. We are still talking about identity. What do I stand to gain if, if I've discovered myself, what God has put in me, I'm using it, what are my benefits? He's talking about what? Reward system. Bible says that see it a man who is diligent in his work. He stands before who? Kings. That is a reward. Your reward is of two types. One is eternal, while the other one is earthly. But let me first of all talk about the earthly reward. Your potential opens reward for you. Many of us are not rewarded because you've not yet used your potential. Now, what is a potential? A potential is God's ability, package and embedded in you to profit, to be self-reliance, and to make impacts to your generation. This could, up, this could come out in form of your talents. It could, uh, it, could, uh, it could come out in form of the gifts. It could come out in form of special ability. What you can do that others cannot do. It could come out in form of what you have passion to do that others do not have passion to do. It could come as a result of your intellectual ability to reason and to work on it. Mind you, leadership is the result of a charismatic person personality. You must be charisma. You must put charisma to the potential. The potential that special divine ability in you will be dormant if charisma is not added to it. You need to work on it. You need to polish it. You need to bring it out. 
You can only fulfill your inherent leadership potential only when you understand who you are, what you are designed to be, and discover the nature of a true leader. We are talking about a leader. Here we are not talking about you being a head of a place, but I'm talking about you serving your gifts. The moment you serve your gift to people, you become what? A leader. You become a leader in that arena. Now, let's move to leadership potentials. Number one, nobody is born empty. You must have that understanding. Nobody is born empty. Within everybody, there is an undiscovered leader. Within everybody, irrespective of race, irrespective of age, irrespective of religion, within everybody, there is what? An undiscovered leader. There is a leader in you because there is a gift, there is an ability in you. You may not know, but as we continue, you will get some things that will open your eyes to discover how to understand and realize whom you are. But attitude at times, our attitude to our potentials makes us to suffer. Many of us wouldn't have been where we are because our wrong attitude and there is nothing potential can offer to the world when there is wrong attitude. Our attitude to our potential is a function of our announcement to our generation. Are you getting me? Our attitude to our potential is a function of our announcement to our generation. You must understand that there is nothing as powerful as attitude. Your attitude determines your response to the present and determines the quality of future. You remember the story in the Holy Bible? Joshua and Caleb. When Moses was to send people to go and spy the promised land, he selected leaders. Is that not so? A leader from each tribe. When you get it wrong, your generation will suffer it. Out of the twelve, Caleb and who? Joshua. They came, they came to Moses. What they were seeing was not others were seeing. And that is why you must have an eagle eye to see beyond what others are seeing. Economy can never, can never dictate your potential movements. What is happening around can never dictate your potential movement. The best you can have is inner motivation. Motivating yourself. Nobody can give you motivation than the one you give to yourself. Then these people, someone called it, they say, we are able to go. We are going to take the land. Because their attitude. And when you read further, God said, go and tell them, as they have said, so will I do. Only Caleb and Joshua enter the promised land because of right what? Attitude. You must have a right attitude to your what? To your potential. No matter who you are, the nature and the capacity for leadership is in you, as I said. You must understand that. You will never be an original leader until you discover how to think like a leader. Think like a leader. Change your thinking. Say, I'm carrying something. I'm not empty. Even though today I'm still at the minimum, my minimum is turning to maximum. Think like who? Like a leader. In Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, he says, for as he thinks, so he is. Your thinking is you. The composition of your thinking is the composition of your destiny. So you need to think. And the only battle that nobody can help you to fight is the battle of the mind. Pastor, people in the world, 
counselors can even help you to fight some battles. Pastors can help you to fight some battles. The only battle that nobody can help you to fight and conquer is the what? The battle of mind. So you need to work on your mind. What are the things to do in order to explore your leadership potentials? Now, we've talked about the meaning of potentials. How do you discover that potential? Number one, believe in yourself. What do I say? Believe in yourself. There is power in understanding the value of self-worth. There is power in understanding the value of self worth i will cite i will i will make reference to an analysis given by my mentor i so much love him my small he said there was he went to a village and in the village this lion was living with sheep he never knew that he was a ferocious animal until a day that he discovered himself. Sheep and lion are then the same class. One is a carnivorous animal. Is that not so? The other one is what? A vivorous animal. But because of environments, he never knew he could do that. He never knew that he was not a sheep, but he was residing with the sheep. I want to tell you, your environment determines what you do. Be, be careful with people you move with. Sheep in the midst of lion. He behaved like lion. Until a day, he had the other, he, he had the other lion roaring. And he said, ah, the voice, are you getting me? The sound of his own is also the same with the other sound. And he went to the other side. That was the day he came out of that comfort zone. He never saw himself until a day. So you need to believe in yourself. If you are going to what? For you to explore your potential. In doing this, you must believe in your purpose. Knowing the purpose for which you are made. When the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. When you know this, this is what is in me. I've told you a potential is a special ability. That skill, that power, that energy in you that is real, it is not common. That is your strength. It might be a threat to others. It might be a what? A weakness to hurt others. But to you, it is what? It is a strength. That what is your strength is your potential. To you, it may, it, it may be a strength. To others, it might be a threat. It might be a weakness work on those strengths, then you must believe on it. There is nothing God gives to you that is small. But it all depends on the way you handle it. So, believe in your purpose. Two, believe in your God. Who put it there? Three, and believe in the mission. How do I drive it? How do I use it? How do I use it to take me to another level? Another thing you need to do is to search until you find your identity. Search until these are the pathway to potential exploration. You search. Once you find your purpose, you'll be able to find your way. It is true. But when the purpose is not discovered, you will not be able to find your way. Know your purpose will always allow you to focus more on others and less of yourself. When you know your purpose, that shows you are not of yourself. There is difference between being successful and being a significant person. Are you hearing me? Success, how people measure success and... The value of success is to yourself. Is that not so? I went to school. I had first class. Who owns it? But 
there is another level that is beyond success. That is significant what? Life. Adding value. At this level, you are no more seeing yourself. You are seeing others. You are adding value. What are you adding? You are adding life. What you are adding is the gift. What you are using to serve is the gift. Without you discover that gift, can you add anything? Knowing your purpose will also help you to give you a confidence that is attractive to others. When you know your purpose, it will help you, it will give you confidence that will be attractive what? to others. The more you live a purposeful life, the more you become best at it. You start in a day. When you discover it, say for instance, your own is singing. Let me cite a little example of this contemporary musician that are singing. Do they, is it the day they started that they are known all over the world? But because they give themselves to it, they work on, on themselves over and over. Is that not so? Over and over. Over and over. When they are growing, people may not notice. But if we get to a stage, people will keep on wondering, when did they start? The journey of a thousand years starts with what? A step. So, the more you live a purposeful life, the more you become best at it. The more you are efficient in your purpose, the more you have impact on others. The more you are, now you know your purpose, you know what God is giving to you to use, and you are using it. You are using it. That is efficiency. You are using it. Effectiveness produces efficiency. Are you hearing me? Effectiveness produces what? Efficiency. You are, you, you are effective. You are not dormant. You are active. You are using it over and over. That will produce efficiency. Then you will be efficient in that field. How do you discover your potential, your purpose? Go back to the manufacturer of the composition of your life. And let him give you the manual of your life. When you go back to God, that is talking about praying. Praying can never be overruled in discovering whom we are. There are things you may not know how to do, but when you start praying, then you are telling your manufacturer to show you the manual of your what? Of your life. Then, when the manual is given, you'll be able to operate the machine. Ask questions. That's another thing. How can I add value to others? Begin to ask questions. Now, having discovered whom you are, you know your identity, begin to ask questions. Move with people who are doing it. Ask them, how are you doing it? Timidity is the enemy of greatness. Timidity is the what? Enemy of greatness. Anyone who will be great in life has to cast off the garment of timidity. When you are not timid, you humble yourself. You seek for more. You ask questions. The more you are asking, one here, one there, you are adding to your own. Is that not so? Add it to your own. Don't feel proud that I've arrived. When you humble yourself, you are getting from others. Then join to your own. You become efficient. Ask questions. What always make me happy when doing it? Ask yourself. Now, another question. You are asking others, how can I do that also? Ask yourself, what gives me pleasure? What makes me happy whenever I do it? What are my dreams? What can I do the best? How, how can I do best? Note, man is not born into the world to do everything. But man is born to do something. Are you hearing me? Jack of all trade. Master of what? You should not be like that. That is why you must have focus. 
even though you have more than two, more than one, two, three, or four, there is one you have to be a specialist. Are you hearing me? Others what? Follows. Make sure you stand on one. You know that you are so much efficient. You have more strength to carry out. Because when you don't master any of them, you become what? You become an irrelevant person. Another thing you need to do. Partner and connect with like value and like-minded people. Like, you, like the one we are doing now. Pastor and connect with like value and like-minded people. We are talking about your potential to develop, to discover, and to develop. I'm teaching both together. Elijah partner with Elijah. Is that not so? And he's, he got what others could not, got, could not get. Joshua partnered with Moses. And he became a leader. The, the, the disciple partnered with Christ. And they became the agent of transmission of the gospel to all the world. Partnering and connecting with like value and like minded talks about power of mentorship. You must have a mentor. What do I call it? A mentor. Having discovered your, whom you are, your identity, you know this is where God wants you to serve. Look for a guide. Somebody to help you. Somebody to give you an idea. Somebody to encourage you. How do you identify your partner and those who are value-minded people. It is not everybody that can be of help to you. There are people that will discourage, ah, what you are doing, are you sure you will make it there? I remember years back, I was taken as a young, as a young boy, I was taken to a specialist in the field of clarinets. This man, having seen me, he said, you cannot know these instruments. As I'm looking at you, you are too, you are too thin, are you getting me? You don't have the body, the physique to play these instruments. And I was showing interest. I know that I could do it. But this man said, you cannot do it. And so the man discouraged me. But I refused to be what? To be discouraged. So I packed the instrument. I went away from him. And so I started playing without any tutor. No tutor. I took the music, the music notes. I took, I started playing. For two years, I was on it. Nobody was teaching me. But because, because the person that supposed to mentor me discouraged me, he said, you will not, you, you cannot what? But eventually, one day I just came up, I went to meet her, blessed father in the Lord who has passed on. I said, Daddy, I can place this instrument. He said, when do you start? But this man said, you cannot know it. Daddy, can you just try me? He opened, the, he opened one, one in book. Can you just play? No time to rehearse. I played. And that was how I was satisfied. And I kept on wondering that. I didn't be this man has encouraged me. I would have, I, I would have done more. I would have become a better person. But because he discouraged me, but I knew within me that the giant in me, there is a giant in me, so I cannot kill that what? Giant. How do you identify those you should partner with as you grow your potential? Those partners, they think of others before themselves. It is not everybody that can mentor you. It is not everybody that can encourage you on the ladder of potential development. No. Those who can do that, they think of others before themselves. Two, they think bigger than themselves. Three, they have passion that can be contagious. The passion they have is like, it is what? It is contagious. Anybody who moves to them, we also get the passion. Are you getting me? These are the people 
you must, you must look for. They connect and provide great supports. They always want to support you in anything you do. They give full attention to you. They support you with prayers. They support you with counseling. They support you with information. They have, I can do creative spirit about challenges because time is coming as you discover, the, as you are working on the potential, you, mean, you, you will meet what? Challenges. You know life is full of challenges. That also. You must have a person or people you run to to encourage you, to give you strength, to give you courage to overcome the challenges. These life value people, they expand over influence. They are different between authority and influence. The secular leader, don't you know I'm a leader here, I'm a managing director here, I will sack you, that is authority. But when you talk about influence, influence talks about you having what? Relationship with the person, you care for the person, you know him, you know his problem, you, always, you are always there for him, you have influence on him. This time around, authority is not working, it is the influence. If there is anybody you must make as your mentor, should be a person of what? Person of influence. They are ladder builders, not ladder climbers. The mentor you should choose to help you in the ladder of potential development are what? Are ladder builders. They help you build your ladder, the path to follow. They build it for you from experience, from information. They share their failure. They share their experience. If there is any mentor who cannot share the failure, it is only the sources he shares. It is not a good leader. At a time, every leader, we have to what? We fail because failure is, is an ingredient of success. Are you hearing me? Failure is an what? An ingredient of success. When you fail, that doesn't mean you cannot succeed. It is an ingredient. It is a raw material that produces success. So, no leader can just come out and tell me that, no, I've not failed. So, you look for a leader who tells you the failure, how we eventually overcame. Are you getting me? That is how to select. And lastly, they make positive, lasting influence on you. The kind of influence they make on you is a lasting one that cannot be forgotten. That cannot be forgotten. These are the kind of mentor you need to build you. I must not deceive you. In anything, in any gift you want to serve to the world, you need what? A mentor. And I quickly want to explain to you how to get your mentor. You may not have access, a contact, a direct contact to a mentor. By reading books, you may get a mentor. Take for instance, singing is your gift. Look for people who are singing. Is that so? Listen to their songs. Among them, you will find the one that sweeten your own what? Your own style. Is that not so? Then begin to make research on such a person. Make, by the time you make research, you may not even meet him, yet it's your mentor. I've never seen my mentor till he died, yet till today he's still my mentor. In my library, I have virtually all his books. I read from time to time because the day I found my destiny found expression, it was when I was reading his book and I discovered whom I am. You can also find your mentor by, by what? Attending seminars. When you go for seminars, you may meet your mentor. May God help us. So, as you do that, it will help you. And you should not joke with information. Any information gotten from this mentor, take note of it. Work on it. I was listening to a man of God. 
He said, he had about a man of God. He was listening to his preaching. And he said, this man of God said that he usually prayed for 10 hours in a day. And he took that pastoral ministry like an office work. When he resumes in the morning, he has an office. He will resume to the office. He took it serious. The reason why people are not making success is the power of extra. The power of what? Extra. And so as he was listening to the man, the extra, he was paying attention. Pay attention to whatever your mentor is saying. He paid attention. He said everything he said, he also went to do it. The church that was not growing, he just discovered that the church, people started coming. He was counting from 1,000, at a time 10,000, at another time 100,000. Just because of little words, little influence he got from the mentor. And he had never seen the mentor face to face to today. The Lord will help us. These abilities in you, you are going to give account in conclusion. You are going to give account of these abilities in you. If you do not develop it, are you hearing me? If you do not develop it, by the time you are giving the account, you get to the other side, you will not be saying, ah, had I know, I would have done more. If I know, I would have done more. Because over there, you now see that there are opportunities inside of you that it is who failed to explore them. I pray, may we not regret at the other side. God bless you. This more round of applause. I know it's been a very wonderful time. You can never say that this is a waste of time. I believe that. I know many of us, we are jotting down and beginning to revisit our life and beginning to think about where did I miss it? What have I not been able to identify? Am I actually, do I even know myself? You know, begin to see, oh, hope I'm not in the wrong direction. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And once again, we want to appreciate God for this wonderful platform that has been given unto us to actually assist us in life. And I know every one of us, or virtually almost every one of us, has been able to put one or two things down that we would need to go and meditate, revisit, think upon. And this should be able to assist our thinking, what we think about. You know, they have been able to identify to us that as a man thinketh, so is what? So he is. So that means some of us, maybe that's the area we needed to actually um, tackle that will assist us and will bring us back to the right path. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. It is better when we get this while we are still very young. It is better when we, we, that we should get this thing when we still have energy, when we still have strength, when we have the resources, when we have the time. I'm not talking about resources as in terms of money, no. You have the time. Many of us, we are wasting time. Many of us, we are investing on what will not be profitable, that is not profiting at all. Many of us, what we are exploring, we are exploring other people's benefits instead of us to gain something that will make us also be able to impact other lives. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. One more time, I want to appreciate um, Right Focus Africa. We really appreciate you. Thank you very much um, for this platform. And I want to, I want us to also, one of the things you can, good thing you can do is to tell other people that they too are made to rule. They are made to be leaders. They are not just ordinary. There are people that are wandering around that don't even know what they are. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they are called to do. You can help others too. You understand? If God has give, have made you a light, then you can also shine the light. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Please want to appreciate our guest minister once again, the person of Pastor Olubomi Kumui. Honestly, honestly, he's been a wonderful leader. A wonderful leader. A wonderful leader. We pray that God will uphold him the more and the ministry and his family in the name of Jesus Christ. You will see us and you will be happy. You will see us and you will be happy. 
That's the, I know that's the joy of every father, of every leader, that they see their children and they are doing well. That's their joy. And I pray God will increase your joy in that in Jesus' name. Um, I don't know if we have people who have one question or the other. If you have questions that you have jotted, okay. I have one. All right. Two. Okay. My sister. Sorry. My question is for the first speaker. You spoke about profitability of um, your potentials and about transacting with it. So my question is really about um, what, how do you measure your profitability? Like what, 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 rate of measurement do you use for it? Is it monetary or is it, um, is it with um, maybe the satisfaction of fulfillment you get? I don't know if you get my point, sir. So how do you measure your profitability and transaction with your potential? Thank you. Um, um, profitability is measured with many metrics. And one of it is actually uh, monetary, monetary values that you get from the, you know, I talked about the transaction of your, po of your potentials. So money, money uh, making is part of it, but it's not the real uh, measure for profitability. As I said, success is actually about fulfillment. When you do something and you feel fulfilled about it, you are just, you know, this kind of ecstasy that you have that, you know, like Paul said, he said, I have finished the race. I have completed my course. He said, right now, there is lead for me a crown. So he was able to, I told someone one day, I said, um, if I die today, I'll die fulfilled. And if he, I said, I'll die fulfilled. And she said, how can you die fulfilled? Like, you are still young. I said, I don't have to get to old age to feel fulfilled. It's not you get to, old, to the old age that you now get, okay, I've done a lot in life. I'm happy. It's not until then. It is, as you are doing that thing, you should feel fulfilled. A work that will actually make you feel fulfilled later on in life will actually make you fulfilled when you are starting it up. So fulfillment is actually the foundation of fulfillment, of um, profitability, actually. Then you can now talk about impact in the life of people. What are the results? The effectiveness of the deployment of your potentials. Is it really effective? Is it making the right change? that you uh, are actually looking for. I was supposed to talk about how problems should help us discover our potentials, but because of the time, I couldn't do that. So, and I think we still have a little bit of time, so let me just explore more on that. So, the, your potentials and purpose is actually to solve a problem. If you don't have a problem to solve, then you don't need that potential. So, because you have that potential, there is a, it's a signal that there is a pro problem somewhere. For instance, most of us enjoy music. It is because our soul longs for inspiration. Our soul longs for excitement. Through music, we're able to, you know, get the inspiration we need, the excitement we need. So the problem you discover is actually the, um, the, the signal to the kind of potentials you have. Most times, when people to tells you some problems, you feel like this is not a problem because you don't have the potential for solving that problem. Most times when you don't have the potential to solve a problem, you don't see it as a problem. But the things you see as a problem are the things you actually have the potentials to solve. So when you are transacting or deploying your potentials, one of the measures for determining if you are profitable is when you are actually being effective. Like, is the problem getting solved or is it still like that? So when you are solving that problem, effectiveness, then it means that you are actually deploying your potentials rightly. Then, like I said, monetary returns. Yes, you should deploy your potentials and get money from it. Or should I say benefits from it? You should not just, um, if you deploy your potentials without getting benefits, you will remain poor. And God does not want you to remain poor. So if you keep offering your services for free to everybody that asks for it, there's no way you are going to make money. And you'll need money to actually <laughs> survive and, you know, be sustained. So 
it, it's part of the process of um, developing your potentials to actually determine how you want to make money from your potentials. You don't make money with everything you do. Your potentials will not make money like with everything you do. But there is an aspect where money making should come in. For instance, this conference is organized for free. But if someone wants to come in to speak in maybe their own conference, I might charge them. That's an aspect of making money. I might write book from the knowledge I've developed and sell it. That's making money. So you don't just use your potentials without making money from them because your life is, cautious, um, is um, scheduled within time. And you need that time to also make room for your own growth, for your own, um, to supply your own needs. So that's just that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate that. That means I, I think I have a, um, something to say about that. I, I know of a boss that due to circumstances of life and at our place of work, before you know what is going on, he got intimidated by other people that are making, making him feel as if he's not living a fulfilled life. And before you know what is going on, just while that was going on, he was still in the midst of the saga and he, he banked his uh, PhD and became a doctor. Before you know what is going on, we're not like, yes, set. he was speaking with me today, said, let me tell you the real truth. I am fulfilled. I knew how he was reacting. He was just overreacting, talking anyhow, ranting around because of what he was passing through just some months ago. But today, the feeling is, you can see that he's satisfied and settled with him. But then he said, man, if I just, I can drop this work anytime, I can drop their job anytime. He, you know, there's this, there's, as if there's nothing he's aiming to get again. He just feels satisfied. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I want to welcome our sister, Esther Success, for your question. Thank you, sir. Um, my question goes to our father that spoke the other time. When you were talking about how to identify with like-minded people, like people that you can make your mentor, your part of purpose, you said um, they should not be a ladder climber, but a ladder builder. I want to really understand that ladder climber. Is it, is it that... Um, is it that they can actually gain from the person they are mentoring? You, you explained ladder builders, they are building such a person up, building you, building you, but can't, what does it really mean, sir? Thank you. A ladder climber is like POS, ATM. You know, one of the measures of profitability of potential, as rightly said, is in terms of monetary. But in this secular world, most mentors have turned themselves to point of sales, POS, automated teller's machine. For anything you for anything they offer you, you must pay them in returns. With what? With money. And everything is not money. A, a ladder builder goes beyond money, even though money is there, it's an additional. But it should not be the most. Are you getting me? The priority shouldn't be the priority. You make influence not because what you want to get. If it is what you want to get from him, there is a little you can do to him, for him. Because the moment he's no more giving you anything, then you stop building him. So God, God who made us, even though he asks, he asks us to give offering, even in the church. But beyond offering, he says, son, give me your what? Your heart. Can money buy our hearts? So even, even though God is asking for money, but it is not the money that is 
the core important matter to God. The same thing with a ladder builder. A ladder builder is after how that his mentee will be, will be able to fulfill the mission God has commissioned to him. He goes beyond, you know, if it is collecting money from people, then there is no difference between you and being a consultant. Are you hearing me? There's no difference from you and being a consultant. I pay, you pay me my service. Are you getting me? And mind you, the service you render today, your mentee might not pay you today. Tomorrow, he might pay double. I hope you are getting me now. So as a, as a mentor, we should not have the mind of automated teller machine. Are you getting me? And little, you know, that is what is pointing the church these days. Pastor will be asking you, the first thing we tell you, have you, have you paid your tithes? As if tithe is the only thing that is, are you getting me? They don't ask about your, how is your work? How is everything? The first thing they will ask is your, your what? Your tithe. And the moment tithe is no more forth, forth flowing, they start reading Malachi. Cause. 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 Meanwhile, you, you can grow such a person to the stage where he realizes that if he doesn't pay tithe, it's a cost on him. You grow him to the level. Cost should not be what? Should be the first thing. Can you see the difference between being a ladder builder and a ladder climber? They just want what is it is what they want to hit from you. That is what they are after. That should not be the attitude of a good mentor. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate. Please, round of applause once again, please. Let's appreciate God in His life. Um, it's been a wonderful time. It's been a wonderful time. And, um, well, we will be closing now, but we would love to also give us more information about this um, campaign. Let me use the word campaign. <laughs> but, so maybe I'll call on um, the organizer to call. Thank you, sir. Um, I want to first of all appreciate um, our pastor for coming to bless us today. It's been a very eye-opening session for me personally, and I believe for every one of us. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you, sir. And um, thank you all for coming. It's a great privilege to see all of you here. And I want to appreciate your patience. We started some minutes late, I think about 30 minutes or 20 minutes. Um, that is behind schedule. But well, thank God we're also closing some minutes earlier. We're scheduled to close by 6.20, but we are closing very soon. Thank you so much for coming and for waiting. So um, actually, it's supposed to be a campaign, like, you know, something you go for a camp somewhere to, but then uh, the logistics and all of that could not help us achieve that. But then we are still continuing tomorrow, and tomorrow will be starting by 8 o'clock in the morning, and it will start with a meditative session. And the topic for tomorrow's meditative session is um, the connectivity between your history and destiny. Like, you are joining from birth to death. What are you supposed to do in between? Like, how do you um, connect your history to your destiny? And that's talking about tracing your roots back to your source. And it will be an eye-opening session. I'll be taken by our moderator today, Pastor Tolunyo Ade. And then the second session will be coming up by 8.30, which is going to be taken by our pastor, our guest speaker for today, um, Pastor Kumi. And you'll be talking on um, how to apply the force of discipline for fulfilling your life's purpose. How to apply the force of discipline for fulfilling your life's purpose. Um, discipline is a necessity for great men. Um, I used to follow C Cristiano Ronaldo, a player, <laughs> and most times when people compare him and Messi, I, I, I try to tell them that, you see, Messi is actually talented and gifted, but Ronaldo is, a, is an hard worker. He's a disciplined man. The kinds of trainings he does, in fact, sometimes I'm like, 
are you going to kill yourself? You know, so discipline is actually a necessity for greatness. And if you don't know how to apply discipline to your life, your life will not make the right results. So you'll be taking us through all of that tomorrow. And um, the third session will be taken again by me. Well, I'll be talking about how to develop your life plan, your mission and your vision plan for achieving success. You know, many of us, we have visions, we have missions, we have dreams we want to accomplish, but we don't know how to plan ourselves to accomplish these missions. Some people marry at the wrong time. Some people marry at the, uh, too early. Some people marry too late. You know, how, how do you justify um, the setting between your career, your marriage, your, your finances, how do you match all of this together such that one does not affect the other at the given time? It's important to know how to plan your life and plan how you want to live it. And that's what that session will be focusing on tomorrow. And after that session tomorrow, we'll be rounding up with a workshop um, and uh, an assessment session. So um, I would like us to actually, some of us are not jotting down. It's very important. I think in our event manner, we already stated it that you should come with your pen and your paper. It's very important for you to write in a seminar like this. And if you are not writing, it means you don't actually value knowledge. So when you are coming tomorrow, please bring your pen and your paper to, to, um, with you so that you can put down something. Some of this information will be useful for you at another time in life. And then I'd like you to also, uh, and those online too should actually, you know, be penning things down. And then um, for our online um, audiences, we'll not be streaming on Facebook tomorrow. We'll only be streaming on YouTube so that we can conserve the, um, the, the streaming. <laughs> I don't know how to put it now. So that we can conserve the resources. So we'll be, only, we'll be focusing on YouTube alone tomorrow. And then that will be all for tomorrow. And then um, we're actually planning to make a week-long um, discussion on another topic, which is the rules for greatness. But by tomorrow, we'll be giving final, uh, we'll be making final conclusion on that. Maybe it will still hold or not. It was actually scheduled to hold from 10 o'clock in the morning daily from Monday to Friday. And it's going to be talking about um, the rules of greatness, how to achieve greatness in life. So we'll be giving you more information about that tomorrow. Once again, I want to thank you all for coming, and I pray that as we return to our destinations today, God will keep us safe, and we'll be here again tomorrow, ill and early. Thank you for coming. Can we say the grace together as we leave? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs>